Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hashtag Open Ed. I'm Miley from the Hashtag Open team, and I'm joined by my co-host and friend, Sarah, and our guests for tonight, Blaine and Lotus Ropel. In just a minute, Sarah is going to tell you more about our amazing guests, who we're so excited to chat with tonight. But first, I want to tell you a little bit more about Hashtag Open, the sex-positive dating app for open relationships like polyamory, BDSM, and more. When you join Hashtag Open, you're going to find a community of open-minded members who are interested in or already exploring ethical non-monogamy or other alternative relationships. If you're looking to swipe, match, and chat with your partner, you can create a partnered account, or you can create a solo account to swipe on your own. If you join Hashtag Open, you will find a community that represents a diverse range of sexual, gender, and relationship orientation. And we make sure you have all the tools to communicate those things right on your profile. Just choose from our extensive list of labels or add in your own. We also give you the ability to connect based on your desires and interests. Try one of our hashtag searches to quickly find other members who share those desires. And um, we are completely free. You can download us at hashtagopen.com to join our membership of almost 80,000 members worldwide. Um, and Sarah, we hope to see you um, in app happily swiping. And for tonight, can you tell us more about our topic? I can. I can talk all night long about this because there's so much I don't know and I want to get more answers. Uh, so that was a really lousy introduction. I said like the good introduction was before we went on camera now. Mm. Um, so one thing that we really do uh, love about doing our hashtag open ad series is that we get to kind of like a lot of times we'll, we'll bring on educators. We're talking about a very broad, very general kind of like, you know, how to give a blow job or, you know, how to use a flogger. Um, but we also have this wonderful flexibility to go kind of detailed and niche. And we think like that technical stuff is like, it's really fun to learn how to tie, tie somebody up. And it's really fun to learn how to throw a flogger. Um, but there's a lot of internal work and communication work that that all makes that play really amazing and um, the beginning of the year is always a good opportunity for us to kind of look at like what have we been doing where are we at where where is our heart telling us we want to go what is the kind of play or the kind of kink or the kind of relationships that we're looking for because this is a great time to kind of jump start that um, and so for those of you who are with us last week we talked a little bit about how to build a better dating profile. Um, and that'll actually be up on YouTube fairly shortly if uh, you missed it. Um, and we are really excited to have uh, Blaine and Lotus Rope Wolf tonight. And they're actually gonna talk to us about vetting. Um, how to tell whether it, the person that you're talking to or the action that you're contemplating or the relationship that you're considering getting into, like what's the internal work on figuring out if that's the right person or if that's the right experience? How do you communicate about that with your intended partner? Um, we mentioned references earlier. So, so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm actually going to read their amazing bio because um, it's a little easier than me missing anything. Uh, so Lois Rope, Wolf, and Blaine are romantic partners who love BDSM so much that they came together to teach. Uh, their relationship includes BDSM, DS dynamics, and ethical non-monogamy. Lotus is a professional dominant who specializes in rope and sensation play. Blaine is a licensed massage therapist, copywriter, and professional submissive. As they grew and shared the journey along the way, they found themselves interacting with more curious kinksters around the country. Questions ranging from play partnerships and vetting to various archetypes and kink pushed them to open themselves for consults and conversations, but it just wasn't enough. This, inf this need for information and the desire for experience prompted them to curate various private events for open-minded people to learn hands-on kink and BDSM practices and dynamics. Together, they use their skills and experience to make information accessible to kinksters at every stage of their journey. COVID-19 hit, yes, and everything changed, but people still wanted to learn and engage with others even while distance. Migrating to virtual platforms was worth it because they could create an even larger reach for education. Working together as collaborators has allowed them to grow in love and in laughter as they share. Um, they currently reside in New York, and um, we are really, really excited to have you with us. So I'm going to STF you and let y'all take it away. Thank you so much for having us. This is a really important topic to us. We talk about this a lot, um, not just in our 
our, our conversations and what we want to teach, but with people in the community that we interact with yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, hold on. So I just got to get my sound patches. <laughs> he had them on the wrong side of the room. You're all good. <laughs> he was eating my candy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah, like, like our bio says, uh, we do work together in love and laughter. Um, Lotus and I, it's quite funny because this is the first time that we are working together on a, uh, on a forum like this where I am talking in front of the camera. I'm usually signaling to him <laughs> um, from the other side and um, just writing the information. So it's, it's really great to be on the other side um we don't have to do introductions which is great and we can jump right into vetting mm -hmm. and what our goals are for today with yes. you so for today we want to make sure that you're able to articulate your wants and your needs and that you can identify and navigate your boundaries with new or established partners and to make sure that we leave you with the ability to create your own vetting process and so if you have some goals uh, for this workshop that that I didn't say, put them in the chat because we want to. We be would able to love help. to see it. Um, we do. Uh, we do love to tell people that the vetting processes that we create are not just for new relationships. Mm -hmm. We can reestablish boundaries and renegotiate the relationships that we have now, and they're not just the romantic ones. We can. Uh, articulate our wants and needs to all of our relationships, that being platonic, romantic, um, purely intimate. We are able to tell everyone what we need and get the most from our relationships and give the most from our in our relationships. Um, and we're using a vetting process to open ourselves up to receive and to give information mm -hmm. in a way that feels natural, um, responsible, and thoughtful. Yes. Um, so I like to start with self-discovery. We vet ourselves first. Um, when I was thinking about being polyamorous, that was about 10 years ago. I spent a year trying to read as much as I possibly could. And then I decided to seek partnership. I wanted to see if there was anyone that I could go out and date. Um, now it's, I'm 30 years old, it's 10 years later, and so much has changed. The types of partnerships that I want have, have changed. The requirements for partnership have changed. Even the type of polyamorous relationships I want have changed. Um, and then coming into kink, I got to learn that there are so many other different types of dynamics that aren't sexual. And the hardest part was figuring out what I wanted so that I could tell people what I wanted. Mm -hmm. It felt like more in, uh, in non-monogamy where people really asking me, well, what are you looking for? As opposed to, you know, just going out on a date with someone in there. Like, like, you're available. You're saying you're available. <laughs> you're expecting some form of monogamy or not. Yeah. And it's like, you know, within our, our different love styles and lifestyles, we're able to take from different parts of our favorite kinds of relationships and create this thing that we want. But sometimes we don't always feel like clarity is there when it's time to articulate what it is that we're looking for yeah. and what it is that we're seeking and, and setting the expectation for others. Um, and that's where we start with ourselves. Knowing ourselves makes it easier to navigate expressing the things that we want with other people that we're interested in. And we're able to receive it because we're, we're guiding the conversation and we're confident. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so what we like to do is give this self-discovery exercise or, ex or assessment. And here are a few questions that folks can write down um, and answer on their own later. What started me on my journey? How do relationships fit into my life? How is my life influenced by relationships? What are my boundaries? 
and boundaries are my favorite one. How much do I want to let someone in? How much do I have to give? If I only have enough to give for a casual relationship, it is important that I articulate that and then I am specific about how much I want to give. Um, I am not a phone person. I have learned that I have to tell people that no matter who they are, <laughs> whether they're new friends or, you know, someone I'm networking with or someone who's even vetting me for a BDSM based relationship. I have to let them know you're probably going to need to text me because I do not like to talk on the phone. <laughs> uh, it can be something as simple as that, making sure that people know so that someone's not feeling like you're ignoring them yeah. um, or, you know, just not wanting to speak to them. And it's like, oh no, I never told you I was a phone person. Maybe they didn't think to ask. Absolutely. And I want to draw from a reference. Uh, an artistic reference <laughs> that I watched lately. For the first time in my life, I watched Love Jones. And it was funny because so I'm a poet and so people would always be like, yeah, like Love Jones. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I've never seen it. Like, I get it. I know who's in it. Everyone looks great. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> I literally have to get HBO Max so you can see this movie. You have to understand. Like, but, I, <laughs> but I watched, I watched it. We watched it together. And we realized that in their interactions that they didn't vet each other at all. And no one asked the really important questions or gave the important information. Um, they didn't share with each other how much emotional space they could hold for each other. Um, Neil Long's character didn't let um, Lorenz Tate know that she was recently engaged. And like having that that conversation would have actually helped them understand what it is they were looking for. Then he wouldn't have had to lie and say like, oh, I'm not really feeling you. You can go and visit the dude that you used to date and it's not gonna bother me. <laughs> and pretend that it was casual when he was really developing feelings. So if you were having those conversations from the get-go, you will actually avoid having those, those uh, experiences. <laughs> And, and vetting is important. It's, 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 I don't want to use the word investigate, but it is important to know as much as you need to know about someone to feel comfortable. You know, the, the days of asking someone, why do you need to know that? <laughs> um, are kind of over because we do want to open ourselves up unless it feels inherently intrusive people asking us questions about ourselves is a good thing. I, I like when people ask me things instead of assuming. Uh, like just as simple as you asking me what my pronouns were. That makes me happy, that makes me feel seen, and it makes me feel considered. And, and it's become a part of our language. Yeah. I love to meet people and ask them that. And it shows that I'm being thoughtful and I'm being considerate, and I want you to feel comfortable in this space with me. We, we vet people and we build this dynamic because we want to create a garden. We want it to be fertile and to be beautiful and prosperous. Yes. And any amounts of miscommunication or negative feelings do suffocate our plants. They show up like weeds and, you know, we can address it quickly and that's like snipping the weed or we can pull it from the root and say, this is what's really, this is what I'm really trying to ask you. Yeah. I feel like sometimes we, we teeter on, you know, how are you feeling today? I, I know people ask me, how am I feeling today? Because they really want to tell me how they're feeling today. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell me how you're feeling today. Tell me what's on your mind and feel confident in knowing that I care. We can... We have full control over the people that we allow to come into our space. Right. You know, things are so condensed now. We're social distancing. We have to be very selective about who we're letting into our physical space, our emotional space, our mental space. And 
asking the proper questions and having solid communication and responsible communication allows us to even be able to say, I don't like this. This does not make me feel good. I remember one of the first times uh, we had had a disagreement and I said, "I, I don't like the way that made me feel. And it felt juvenile to me. Like why, why is my, articulation of my emotions so simple but it is that simple this does not feel good this hurts and we should be able to tell people that we're hurting or we're uncomfortable or we're not enjoying an interaction because we have that amount of communication we have responsibility in our communication where i know that you won't continue to do the thing that you're doing if it's set but if you do because I am vetting you, I can choose to move forward or not. Right, and you have to understand like, hey, you doing this thing after I've brought it to your attention and let you know how serious it was, you doing that thing despite that is a violation of my boundaries. And you should know how to proceed if someone violates your boundaries. What would you like to do afterwards? Well, that's something that we can talk about a little bit later. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like when we become more comfortable talking about things and and just talking about relationships and our feelings that when the hard stuff happens you can talk about it just as fluid as you talk about the good things because when we're talking to each other and we're communicating with each other we should not limit it to only addressing the negative i don't like this thing like we should also be using the same amount of energy to celebrate the things that we do like when we're just meeting someone. I like the way you make me feel. I like the way I feel around you. You seem very happy when you're here. Do you enjoy being in my space? It's good to ask these questions so we're not always in our heads. I am very much an in my head person. I will have conversations and meetings with myself at a a boardroom table where it's just me and my thoughts. (laughs) And I'm going through all of the ways that this person in front of me could be feeling regarding an interaction with me and talking about everything with everyone except the person that's sitting next to me. It's so easy to do that. And most of it is rooted in fear. We have to be confident. We have to understand that our feelings are valid and we deserve to feel good. We deserve to be heard and seen and we deserve to have our boundaries respected. Long gone are the days where we're sacrificing happiness just for companionship. We have the ability to have good, solid, fulfilling relationships with people. Yes. And and vetting allows us to do it. Yes, it does. And knowing what you want helps Mm -hmm. you be more open to receiving it. Um, Even if you don't expect to enter a new relationship, you don't want to miss out on a connection because you're not actively seeking a person. You should have that blueprint or that Mm -hmm. that outline in Mm -hmm. your in your mind so that you know if you do run into that person and it's serendipity that you're not ill prepared, Mm -hmm. that you know how to communicate, you know, hey, I see you and you have the qualities that I want in this type of role in my life, or I would Mm -hmm. like to play with you. I would like to go on a date with you. I would like to Skype more or talk more, or I would like to, uh, I'd like to date you monogamously, Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. would you like to meet my partner? Like these are interesting (laughs) things that you can, or be my partner. Like it's okay to, to know what you want, even if you're not actively seeking. And one of my favorite things that Lotus says is that um, knowing what I wanted helped me to be open to receiving it. It was so cool. You know, we say, oh, I didn't see this coming. I see it coming because I, I know what I want. And I recognize the thing. We had met at a play party. <laughs> yeah. We had met at a play party someone was having. It was Halloween themed. And I was not dressed for Halloween. <laughs> I didn't, everyone seemed to have a costume. And I went as a, a third wheel. And it was very interesting because I just see someone doing rope over in the corner. And I'm like, oh, I follow that guy. That's a nice guy. I said nothing to him the entire party. <laughs> I think I might have said hello. Yeah. But 
I did not feel a level of preparedness. I was not prepared to have a conversation. I felt like I don't want to bother this person because I don't even really know where I am. And I took some time to figure out where I was. And one of the most important questions I got asked was just the myriad of questions that we started to come together to to establish the vetting process that we wanted. Um, and we vetted each other about six weeks yeah. before we got back together to have a BDSM scene uh, with some rope and some candles. And um, we got to feel the vibe. And I, I yeah. thought it was, it was nice. It was nice and it, I felt confident because this person was asking me just as many questions as I was asking them. Yeah, and that's really what it's it's about. It's about creating this opportunity to feel the vibe. Like you want to be able to experience this person as much as you can with a level of uh, distance that feels safe, but a level of intimacy where you're developing trust at every moment. We talk a lot about hot and heavy relationships and how sometimes being hot and heavy and being excited can sometimes cloud our judgment or mm -hmm. allow us to rush into something that we probably would have uh, probably would have pursued at just a slower pace. Um, I, I had just told Lotus the other day that uh, none of my hot and heavy relationships have lasted. <laughs> You feel everything. It's just so intense and it's so consuming. Um, we refer to it as that new relationship energy, that NRE. It it can it can be consuming. It mm -hmm. allows us to feel all of the good feelings, but sometimes we are operating with blinders on, and it's it's not great for us. We have to incorporate the vetting. And, and negotiate our boundaries so that we're also keeping a steady pace with ourselves. We're checking in with ourselves constantly and saying, hey, did you, did you ask them about that thing? Or do you, do you recall how you felt when they said this thing to you? Check in with yourself so you're uh, being consistent and also being considerate of your boundaries. You don't want to neglect any of your boundaries or any of the things that are important to you because you want to feel good. And that's something that we have to consider right now in the, the time that we're living in. We are living in a Panera bread right now, guys. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's a, a panorama. It's a pandemonium. <laughs> it's a pandemonium. <laughs> we, are, we are being charged with maintaining sanity and distance we have to yes a pajama party a big <laughs> pajama party we have to think about our interactions and how they're making us feel yeah. we are forming so many more emotional relationships now and it's it's very interesting you know we're just getting closer to people i'm talking to people from high school now on facebook and i'm like well, we're in a Panera Bread. I might as well talk to you. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's also to, we have to pace ourselves. So we are also paying attention to when things are not aligning. Yes. Um, I don't like to harp on red flags. You know, <laughs> yeah. I feel like we get so many of the red flags, but we do have to pay attention to them. We mm -hmm. have to pay attention to when pieces are misaligned and be okay speaking up about it, advocating for ourselves. And also know that vetting doesn't stop once they're in your life. Yes. Or once you're, you're dating someone because your relationship evolves it or it escalates, right? Yes. And you should have conversations when you feel the escalation happening. Um, this is something we talk about in our relationship a lot, that every moment of escalation in our relationship, we spoke about it. Well, after we spent six weeks getting to know each other and then we had a really passionate scene and we got to know each other better, we, we wanted to see each other again. 
and we wanted to engage in a relationship that was more than just a BDSM play partnership. And we did that. And we talked about it. We talked about, we laid out the different kinds of relationship options based on what it was that we were available for. You know, we both were non-monogamous. So it was like, okay, check. So I don't have to convert you or worry about having to convert <laughs> you. That, that was a big thing for me. I was like, okay, we've got that. That's the big part right there. And then we had to figure out, well, what are the boundaries? And it, it felt like we were just shifting different pieces. And then we sat on it. We thought about it. It was like, let's take, let's take a little bit. We still went on dates. We still hung out together. But we really were taking inventory actively as we were enjoying each other's company to see what things were feeling like. And when we did decide to um, transition our relationship to actually dating, like I want to go places in the daytime with you and eat food and not just be, you know, a BDSM relationship. It was like, okay, well, we are on the same page. That's fine. Um, when we decided that we had uh, fallen in love with each other, that was also a conversation. I am feeling feelings and I would like for you to know. And he said, well, I'm feeling feelings too, but I need some time to think about them yeah. um, mm -hmm. before I bring those to you. And we left it at that. We literally just sat it there and it was like, okay. So I didn't feel like I needed to guess how he was feeling about me. He made sure that I knew that those weren't negative feelings, that they were in the realm of what I was. But I feel like the most important part of it was me feeling comfortable and confident to say it. I have such a throat chakra issue. <laughs> you know, I have struggled with articulating my feelings and being 100% open and honest about how I've been feeling just for fear of judgment or hurting someone's feelings. It's never really um, because of others, just really myself and, you know, being self-conscious and wanting to be more confident. It felt good to just be able to say how I felt. And it reared so many positive results. I was like, I should keep doing this. I should keep saying how I feel. Mm -hmm. I should continue to do this because it hasn't failed me yet. And it won't. And it won't. And I, I've not only taken these practices to my friendships, but also uh, family relationships. Like, hey, I do not particularly care for your, your cake. It's dry. <laughs> it's not to hurt your feelings, but I don't like this cake, you know? And it's like, it felt so good. It felt like the feeling you get when you curse. And you're like feeling relieved. I feel relieved being honest about my feelings. It's and catharsis because you're not holding this thing in. Yes, the cake, the cake. Yes, the cake. <laughs> you're not holding it in. Anymore. You're not holding it in, and you're not wondering or feeling mm -hmm. like I'm not being honest with this person. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about interactions. Mm -hmm. You have to commit to interacting. I have friends who want to interact and meet people, but don't want to interact and meet people. <laughs> that doesn't really help you to achieve your goal. Maybe they don't yeah. know what their goal is, right? Because then it's like, yeah. if you knew what you were looking for or what it is you are lacking at least. But the key is saying it, right? Because yeah. if you're communicating, with someone, mm -hmm. hey, I don't like constant interaction or maybe, you know, sometimes I get overwhelmed with too much interaction a week. I would love to talk to you about three days a week while I'm getting to know you. You can choose to escalate or increase your interaction with someone as you feel comfortable, mm -hmm. pace yourself mm -hmm. and be realistic and be open and be honest so that someone understands. Because the, the, the goal is to be understood yes. and to be appreciated right. for who we are. Because everyone has different styles of learning and experiencing new people. Mm -hmm. And your vetting process will change as your needs and circumstances change. Yes. But if we set the expectation and say, hey, this is, 
this is the kind of process I require or the mm -hmm. type of interaction with you that I would like, you give the person the option and always be open if they decline. Yes. One of the uh, funnier parts about the movie that we were watching when we were watching Love Jones was I said that my biggest issue was the fact that the primary character pursued the other and she said that she wasn't ready for a relationship and yes. he still pursued her again. Mm -hmm. He was still very aggressive in, in his pursuit of her. He got her address. He got her address. He went and to her, her house. He, he asked her on a date and she broke down even though she wasn't prepared. We don't want to put, we don't want to back our, our love interest into a corner. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to be backed into a corner. If you say, hey, no, I'm not quite ready to meet up yet. It should be respected. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially in the world that we're living in. Especially now. Wow. <laughs> um, I saw someone say on Twitter, like, they felt so awkward with an interaction with someone because he was like, hey, let's meet up tomorrow. She's like, it yeah. takes, like, you know, a couple days for rapid testing. Like, you want to go out now? <laughs> She's like, we haven't even, <laughs> we haven't even discussed that part, yeah. you know? <laughs> and I was like, you know what, thinking about it, yeah, this is not, we are not in that day and age anymore. We have to consider mm -hmm. all things. Um, yeah. I would love for us to stop here um, and answer any questions if anyone has any. Do yeah. you see any? For us? Um, no questions? questions, but one thing that you were saying just now, um, like I, I have descended to the Hallmark Channel portion of the pandemic occasionally, yeah. and 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 it is there's this there's this like the prescribed way particularly for het couples, like the way that the man is supposed to do things, the way that the woman is supposed to do things. And, and I think there's, there's almost a part of me as somebody who grew up with that expectation that's kind of like when you were like, oh yeah, the, the don't pursue. It's like, I know that, but there's also this part of my brain that thinks, oh no, that's how it's supposed to, to work. That's how it's supposed to work. Yeah. And, and we talked about that last night because when the character shows up at the other character's home, I say, you know, you can't do that now. <laughs> you can't, you can't just show up to people's house. I say, you know, it used to be cute before, but also, if someone says, "No, I'm not. I don't want to go out with you," you, you just have to respect it, mm -hmm. and yeah. maybe not now, because mm -hmm. not now doesn't mean not ever. But our our no is a complete sentence, and. And mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much someone would like to vet us for a relationship or like to pursue us. You also are taking inventory of yourself to know when you're not prepared for something or not interested in something and being able to say, well, I'll pass on that or I'm not yeah. prepared for that or I don't want to talk to you as often as you would like to talk to me. And that's okay. Absolutely. It's okay. And it, it doesn't say anything about us personally. I know that, you know, every interaction may not be that easy. <laughs> we, we're realistic in knowing that. Sometimes they may circle back and try again, or mm -hmm. um, sometimes they just may not receive the information well and mm -hmm. say something nasty. But we can still feel good knowing that we spoke up for ourselves. Yeah. And that we're not compromising ourselves because you can say yes to the date and it, it drain you. Yeah. It, it not make you feel good or every reason why you didn't want to do this thing with this person happens. It's like, and mm -hmm. this was exactly what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. This is why I said no. And now I have a negative interaction to associate with you as opposed to none at all and maybe have gone on a date with you at some point or, or not. But mm -hmm. it's like you're running the risk of creating negative memories and interactions that we don't yeah. want. Yeah, we we have, we've had that. enough of those. Yeah. So uh, we had one, one question uh, from somebody who said, what kinds of questions should I ask myself when exploring what I want from a relationship? And I know that y'all did some questions verbally earlier. I did get actually a request also could could those be something that gets shared in the chat or otherwise? Awesome. Um, 
our self inventory questions. We put in there. Right. Beautiful. Thank you very much for that. So you should have these questions and ask them for yourself. And the person you're speaking to should be able to answer them or any variation of them mm -hmm. to you. Um, Great point. Yeah, that it's a two way street. Yeah. 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 Because they should be and they should be open to telling you uh, mm -hmm. how they got started on their journey. What Oh, you know, how do relationships fit into their life? How is their life influenced by relationships? You need to know if you're non-monogamous and you don't like nesting partners or you prefer um, not to speak to your partners every day. Or do you Being able to tell someone that so they understand if they have more of a, um, a different attachment style, period. Yeah. You, you're mm -hmm. able to explore the parallels and be realistic where maybe you guys don't fit so much instead yeah. of finding those things out later i'm really big mm -hmm. on n no surprises i don't like relationship surprises or dating surprises like i didn't know that you like cold play yeah. <laughs> i love cold play that's great but what if i don't <laughs> <laughs> but, but like seriously like you should um, be able to like ask and answer these questions and mm -hmm. be able to tailor to what you're looking for um, and know that if your ideal person needs to be or you think your ideal relationship is that they need to be friends with your other partner or know your other partner exists well obviously she knows they exist <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> like, so let me do, do, do they want to be friends and be in their each other's lives yeah that's a conversation table you do you like kitchen table poly yes. i love it i like communal energy and everyone in the same space if they can be and enjoying each other without yeah. hostility or awkwardness yeah. but everyone yeah. doesn't like that some people have a very hands-off approach um, they don't need to intersect and that's fine. Um, in kink, we tell people that you have to, you know, expressing what you like in kink does not have to be sexual. You're yeah. talking about the things you, you enjoy the same way you would hiking, bowling, going to the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like it's important for us to be able to communicate the things that we enjoy. And, and I feel like if we lead with this level of openness, because, you know, obviously everyone in the world is not here with us in this class today, but people learn based on our, their experiences with us. Yeah. And they'll think about, wow, you know, say you, you go down this list of questions and because they're so broad, they allow you to get really detailed into the things that you want for yourself. And you'll find yourself asking more questions and, and diving deeper. You can ask you know, a potential partner that same question and they may not have an answer. That's something that you can talk about. That's more dialogue. The more mm -hmm. you talk, the more sharing happens, the more memories that they care to share because you're, you're, it's, it's give and take. It feels yeah. cool. It's supposed to feel like an equal exchange. You don't want to uh, look and feel like I'm giving so much information to this person and they are giving me nothing. It's just dry. That's a red flag right there. If you feel like you have to pull information from someone. Mm -hmm. but, but don't be so, also don't be surprised if someone has never been asked those questions. Mm -hmm. and, and also be patient with someone if you feel like they are having a hard time with opening up. You have to understand that every, it, it takes time for everyone. And we also understand that vetting processes have not yet been normalized. You know, yeah. establishing boundaries has not yet been normalized. It's not a practice that we all have, but it does make those of us who utilize it more confident. It makes it better. Yeah. Um, what are some of the disadvantages of relationships starting with BDSM and physical versus dating them first. Well, yeah. <laughs> let me tell you, because BDSM does not always require sex, 
it is so, whose possum is this? So cute. Um, <laughs> because BDSM does not inherently require sex, you can start out with a BDSM relationship yeah. and transition, but that comes with negotiating your boundaries and negotiating the kind of relationship that you want yes first you first, first first you have to know what your boundaries are and negotiate what the relationship is and then um does it, are you two compatible right or are the people that you're trying to do this thing with compatible um but there's also the the flip side when you have a relationship already that's a long term relationship mm -hmm. and then you're trying to include bdsm and kink into it um it, there are also advantages and disadvantages of that but those are specific um scenarios yeah i i think that the disadvantage of starting any type of relationship would only be the lack of effective communication like mm -hmm. you have no matter what the duration of your relationship is going to be with this person there are conversations that that, that need to happen like um i was telling someone the other day she has a breeding kink she likes to be cream pie i hope everyone knows what that means <laughs> um, and i told her you know when you are engaging with partners and you want to engage in this kink mm -hmm. are you making sure that you have all the necessary conversations with this person are you talking about uh the forms of family planning that you're using and in the event that something happens that is unforeseen do you guys have a mutual agreement for what your steps are in the event that that happens no we're not looking for it to happen but it's best mm -hmm. to just have a plan and be vigilant we had that conversation we had that conversation and it was it was very easy i feel like it started out a little rocky because i was unsure about uh, bringing it up but seeing the ease mm -hmm. that he had in having it he's like oh no i thought about this already it it feels better mm -hmm. so that no one feels like oh well you know what if this happens the what ifs are what what catch us slipping yeah yeah. Um, but if we're talking about it, if we've talked about it, and, and not just talking about it, but checking in every now and then when it crosses your mind and asking the person, hey, do you still feel that way about whatever it was? No, you don't feel that way anymore? Tell me why. Let's talk about it. Let's mm -hmm. see what's changed because right. things change. And it could be a shared experience that you both learn from and decide to reorient your relationship orient your dynamic based on past experience yeah. let's see how do we handle an issue where boundaries and wants are often discussed and accepted but later turned out not to be what a partner wanted or a lie about their boundaries lying about boundaries mm. is a thing that people do yeah i don't know why <laughs> i think it's to be accepted a lot of people say like i have yeah. no boundaries yeah you can do whatever you want to me i want to be the best mm -hmm. sub, or I want to be the greatest dom. I love everything. I'm skilled at everything. Let's do it. Come on. You don't, you don't have to do that. You don't have yeah. to do that. It's okay. You know, I think it sucks if we find ourselves liking someone or are interested in someone, and maybe there's something that they like that we don't. Yeah. You kind of start to think, mm, is that a heart limit for me? No, your heart limits need to be your heart limits. And if you find that you're interacting with someone whose limits and boundaries waver a lot, ask them about it. <laughs> you have to feel comfortable and feel empowered to speak up and ask in instead of assuming or feeling like we should disconnect mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. something is happening. You yeah. know, we don't have to cut it off. We don't have to, we don't have to cut it off, but we do have to talk about it and feel good in talking about it. Hey, I noticed that you said that you didn't like hot wax. You don't mm -hmm. like going to the movies. You yes, prefer to stream movies. I had someone lie to me and say that they liked, um, what was the show I liked a lot? Smallville. 
he did not like Smallville. <laughs> <laughs> and it was crazy how I found out because I was like, it's tonight at seven. He's like, what's, what's tonight at seven? It's Smallville, sir. You told me you liked the show. Why would you lie? <laughs> why? <laughs> why would you lie to me? But it's obviously to impress you. It's obviously mm-hmm. for acceptance. And mm-hmm. unfortunately, it it can trip you up. But you have mm-hmm. to feel you have to feel like you can talk about it. You have to say, "Hey, I noticed this. This is something mm-hmm. that I noticed." And, and if you care enough to bring it up, that definitely means that you should have a conversation about it. Yeah. There have been a couple of questions. Uh, there was a reclarification um, about more in the range of emotions or romance, like one-sided feelings. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think there's also one that I think might tie in with that, which is how do we respond uh, when we do communicate what we want in a relationship, but the other person kind of dismisses it like uh, in a long term and wanting to do something new with them, but they don't. So those maybe can, yeah, I figured I'd throw all the hard ones at you. Oh yeah, no, that's good. So (laughs) to to start, (laughs) goodness gracious, that's a good one right there. I mean, that's a, it's a lot. Oh, unrequited love. It's so hard to put yourself out there. It's, it's, it's tough. Um, I had the experience before where I had, um, I was in a polyamorous, polyamorous relationship. I feel like the, the person I was with was interested enough in me, but I don't think that he had the capacity for our relationship. As far as time, desire, just space overall to accommodate a person with feelings. And I found myself on the other side of a brick wall, happy in my relationship, happy that it started, but it wasn't kicking off the way that I wanted. And I found that I went for a few months without saying anything and regretted it. You have to say something. Um, If you are expressing your feelings and you feel like the person is not receiving it, you then have to revert back to yourself and take inventory of how this relationship is making you feel Mm -hmm. and how it's serving you. When we do our questions on self-discovery, add a question in and how is the relationship that I'm in right now making me feel? How does it add to this overall journey that I'm looking to take, the expectations that I have for my relationships, my pleasure, my intimacy. And if you're starting to see a very clear disconnect and you're not feeling empowered and you're not feeling good, um, whether it be communication or intimacy Mm -hmm. or just the overall treatment and climate in your relationship, then you have to reevaluate it. And, and it's easier said than done. Um, being divorced or divorcing, it is one of the hardest decisions you can make, even if it's the most, uh, the best decision for you. There's just so much that comes with disconnecting in relationships, but we're choosing ourselves, which is why we're, we're creating these boundaries, yes. because we want to be healthy inside and out. We want to feel good. And you deserve someone who hears you. Yeah. who hears you and who adjusts, who hears you and atones, who hears you and understands. and understands. Because one-sided feelings are very, very hard. And you can't make anyone care, unfortunately. Yeah. There is someone who wants to care. Like, you know, sometimes we can feel like there's no one else out there. There are people out there who want to care for Mm -hmm. others they want to have someone who has the emotional intelligence to say these are the things that i like these are the things that make me feel good and receive that you can have a a relationship that's that reciprocates all that you're putting into it because Mm -hmm. one-sided relationships will only hurt you in the long run and it makes it harder it makes it harder for us to to execute all of these tools because we're already disheartened. We're tired. Yeah. You don't want to put all of your eggs, all your creativity and love into a basket that gets disregarded and knocked over. Yeah. 
There's a, a comment that somebody made a while back that the biggest, uh, they think that the biggest challenge in uh, dating and, and kind of like figuring out whether it's the right relationship for you is, is like that, that scarcity mentality, that starvation mentality. It's like, well, if I don't, if I don't make myself the right person for this person, or if I don't take advantage of this, and, and I, I, I've heard you say a few things that are kind of like, you know, flying directly in the face of that about like, no, actually there is what you deserve and you don't have to settle. I found myself in my dating and being non-monogamous for a while, yeah. dating people who weren't non-monogamous or kinky, but were into it, got into it because I was into it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. because I was able to um, explain why I was into it, they were open to trying these things, but it wasn't part of their lifestyle or their love style. And I had to really take inventory and look at those relationships and say, actually, we're, we shouldn't escalate that any further because you are actually monogamous. You're very monogamous. And mm -hmm. you're saying that you're okay with this simply because this love style is how I operate and you would like to be a part of my life, but you don't need to be a part of my life in that way because it's not going to be uh, beneficial to us. It's actually going to yeah, we don't we don't want to try and coax anyone into becoming accepting or to take this journey with us. Um, mm -hmm. I live with chronic pain. I navigate depression, and I'm a sex worker. I'm not currently working because of COVID, and um, I used to think that no one was going to want to deal with that on many different levels. No. And you tell yourself that and you affirm that for some reason. We're like, you know what? No, no one's going to want to deal with this, this, this bag of things that I'm constantly carrying. But there is, there is something special about saying this is who I am yeah. and mm -hmm. having someone say, okay, I, I like that. I, I want that. I can handle that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to dilute yourself. Yeah. You know, because eventually the real you is going to spring back up. It's Absolutely. going to become very, very present. We can only do it for but so long. And trust me, even if you're able to do it for a long time, it's not going to feel good. Yeah. You're not going to feel like you're being yourself. In, and it doesn't come easy. Right. We worked really hard on our communication. He was not a volunteer of information, <laughs> yeah, but I, I understood that. I don't, but I often tell you stories about like things. He tells stories. Past. I like, hey, mm -hmm. here's this time about this and that. But I don't mm -hmm. particularly give away a bunch of information of like, hey, um, you want to hear something? Like, it, it's very interesting because it, it doesn't feel as if I want to give information, but I do enjoy it. Like, I, I, yeah. I tell stories as opposed to just giving information. And I feel like for me, I also had to deal with, like, being myself and being, like, this Black queer man, masculine, and um, what people see and how they feel is, is directed directly tied to my identity, but it's their perception of it. And, yeah. and so understanding and... and and myself, I knew I had to be with someone who I could be myself with. And I'm happy mm -hmm. I found that. And so like really the self-discovery piece for vetting is the most important. Because if mm -hmm. you can understand who you are and how what your journey is, then you can better identify people who will make your life more pleasant. Yeah. I see um, someone in the chat said the rapid fire question method doesn't work for them. Yeah, it doesn't totally. work for any of us. Yeah. Um, I feel like the rapid fire <laughs> question method only works in, in fun scenarios. They have those question card games yes. for mm -hmm. relationships where you can just take turns asking someone a question. Now that works for some people, people like me who like to volunteer information, probably not the non-volunteers who kind of like to take their time and, 
and tell stories as opposed to, mm -hmm. oh, there was that one time at camp, I did whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, you have to find what works for you. I found that for us, um, we like to share while we're in a space with music. Um, we usually will turn the TV off and we'll just kind of be hanging out, mm -hmm. relaxing. I wouldn't even say it's sexual energy, just very calm. Mm -hmm. And we start to talk about things or we try to set the mood or set the stage for communication. Um, I created a really cool playlist that I'm going to post on social media. Um, I call oh, it Many nice. Vibes. <laughs> I made it for the, the class today. Oh, um, nice. Music that inspires openness of communication. Songs where someone is saying, you know, I want to get to know you. You telling someone, I want to get to know you. I feel like music helps us to connect that way. You're saying it, you're singing it, but then you find how, how much ease you have in saying these words. It'll make it easier to say to someone else. Yeah, put on some low light. Some low light. Nice music. Uh, Talk about candle. it. And just have um, some people have, you know, Zoom dates where they just talk about things. You know, we're using so many different forms of technology. Um, rapid fire is also good in text messages sometimes. Um, yes, if uh, they're light questions, you also have to think about what you're asking. Are we asking about trauma? <laughs> then no, it can't be rapid fire. Yeah. Um, if we're asking about uh, things that require more time, you have to know when it's when it's good to give someone space and time so they can think about a question because you want a thoughtful response. I don't mm -hmm. always like to give immediate uh, responses off the top of my head. I feel like it should make my partner feel good that I actually want to think about it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I've found that rapid fire is great for lighter questions, funny things. Um, even if you're talking about intimacy, you know, it doesn't have to feel so heavy or because, you know, sometimes if you want to talk about sex, because talking about sex is something that we do, um, it doesn't have to feel like you are hot and bothered. Sometimes it's just the conversation to get to know the person and the things that they like. Yeah. Um, you asked me what I like. Yeah, what I remember. Like, like, maybe what your favorite porn is. <laughs> what's your favorite porn category? It's kind of, you don't have to be in the mood to ask it, but <laughs> it helps you vet. It also helps you understand what the person is yeah. into. That's your porn category. <laughs> I, I think so. <laughs> but you also need to know what people like, like what, what turns them on, or what yeah. motivates someone, what brings out uh, passion. Yeah, and then and I I like to, I like to offset the the heavier questions with some some good light ones. Um, it'll it'll hurt less as you continue to ask the questions, and and the the hardest part might just be finding your rhythm so that you don't sound like an FBI interrogation, you know, <laughs> figuring out. Because what we're asking also depends on how much time or effort or energy we're looking to invest in this thing. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know what someone's long-term direction for relationships are if I'm just looking for uh, a play partnership or something more casual um, that leans more towards being like a friend with benefits. And even friend with benefit relationships need to be vetted and negotiated and so defined. that and defined so that you are setting expectations for even that. Are you a friend with benefit who gets a little jealous? You need to communicate that mm -hmm. and be open to the fact that they that may disqualify you from the potential relationship. But at least you're not creating any uh, uncomfortable moments for yourself yeah. and others. Sometimes we have to opt out. I always say opting out is my self-care. And, mm -hmm. you know, being non-monogamous, we are, it's often assumed that, you know, we're just a free-for-all. We're just, 
yeah. wanting to take a grab at everything and yeah. you add in that you're kinky, they really think you're grabbing at everything. <laughs> but <laughs> we opt out a lot. You know, um, I try to be poly, but not silly. I think about how my interactions affect my, myself, my time and my partner. Um, and you should think about that as, you know, talking for people who do already have partnerships. When you're vetting and you're entering or, or exploring a potential new relationship, you have to make sure that you're not only checking in with yourself, you're checking in with your partner as well, asking them how they feel. Do they need anything from you? Because new relationship energy, I tell you, I tell mm, you, yeah, yeah. it, it catches you off guard yeah, it <laughs> and it wraps itself around you and you find yourself just in a daze and then you remember that you have other things to pay attention to. Um, we had uh, a conversation the other day that I practiced in my head. And I was going to check in with Lotus about um, a new connection that he had recently established. And I just wanted to be great. And I made the conversation very awkward. I used all the wrong words. It was mm -hmm. just, and I got sad in the conversation because I, I, I said, this was not how I pictured it. I didn't expect you to. I thought if I was like blunt and direct, it was going to be great if it just came off aggressive and poorly timed. It just wasn't, it wasn't great. And even still he empowered me and said, well, it didn't end bad. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was a good conversation. He thought it was great, but my expectation was just for it to go a lot smoother. And mm -hmm. even though he was answering things, he was kind of like, well, what made you ask that? And I'm like, you're not supposed to ask that. That wasn't in my script. <laughs> not supposed to ask me why I'm asking these things. You're supposed to just know that nice. I'm in. I probably should have left with, hey, I want to check in with you about. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you started. That's, not, that is the best way. Not start the conversation in the middle of watching a movie. <laughs> yeah. It is, no, he was playing video games at that. Like, he wasn't. Mm -hmm being very attentive and it was bothering me and then i thought about it i was like mm -hmm. you started this conversation while he was in the middle of mm -hmm. a very important part of his video game of mm -hmm. course he wasn't paying attention um i definitely had to also think about my tone while while asking my vetting questions because i'm a brooklyn girl and sometimes mm -hmm. brooklyn girls sound like truck <laughs> I, you know, I, it's very, you know, uh, what do Brooklyn people say? <laughs> like, forget about it. I talk like that. <laughs> it's just so aggressive sometimes. And I realized that even in my communication, I have to, one of my goals for myself was to be more soft. And I wanted mm -hmm. to really dig into my femininity and really tap into my emotions and explore them instead of suppressing mm -hmm. them like I've been doing. And he, he is very, very conscious of that. So mm -hmm. he knows to tell me like, hey, I didn't necessarily like the way you asked me that question in knowing that I'm trying to be better in how I'm communicating. Yeah. Because, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And mm -hmm. I always have good intentions. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the timing may be wrong or the, uh, the tone may be um, a little off-putting. He was playing mm -hmm. Zelda, Breath, Breath of the, of the Wild. Wild. <laughs> and <laughs> so that, what game was he playing? He was playing Breath of the Wild. It, in, it required so much attention. And... You know, I really mm -hmm. thought I was doing a thing because I had been rehearsing in my head with the boardroom guys. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and it just, you know, he kind of looked at me like, why now? Like, it's okay. <laughs> but why, why write the second? Mm -hmm. 
but we got through it. We got the information. I stopped playing my game. He stopped playing. <laughs> Just in case, just so y'all know. <laughs> Stop playing the game. We had the conversation, and even though it didn't go the way I had planned, he affirmed me and said, "But it wasn't mm-hmm. awful. Like we got the information out there. You know how I feel. You know how it's going. Um, if you are vetting and dating someone and your partner." Ask your partner, how much involvement do they want in this process? How much do they want to know? Um, We used to be a V relationship where Lotus was the center. Um, And I remember in that relationship, the, the amount of information or the, however she wanted the information had changed. Mm -hmm. You know, before it was like, tell me when it gets serious. And then it was like, no, tell me when they, no, I didn't mean, I didn't mean tell me when it gets serious. Uh, (laughs) uh, And I even told Lotus at that point, I said, you have to check in. You Mm -hmm. have to talk to them. You have to ask her how she feels and what information she needs. Mm -hmm. Does she want an update? What kind of update or how much? So uh, make sure that you are communicating on all fronts because Mm -hmm. everybody's feelings matter. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm. The wall of text. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Ooh, so the wall of text. I have learned with that there are some conversations that I have to have uh, verbally. Um, whether it's a voice note, I think that when you're asking questions that tend to be more detailed, switch to a video call, a phone call, or a voice mm-hmm. note, because sometimes it can feel a little, <laughs> a little FBI yeah. ish. And even verbally, it might sound like a uh, an interview. So you want to be mm-hmm. able to have conversations and not just a series of questions we said yes mm-hmm. these people should be able to answer these questions for you but like you should it should be open-ended have this mm-hmm. conversation flow through a, through a series of interactions you want to have answered as many questions as possible uh someone asked about kids um if someone wants kids and one person does not we had to have that conversation we had to have that conversation and it's you have to be honest Mm -hmm. and you have to respect the answers that you are given you you have to if this is a relationship you want to be in um you have to consider it because if you decide that you still want to have children but still want to be with that partner you Mm -hmm. then run the risk of some very uncomfortable interactions going forward and then maybe not being as happy or excited about the children or a child as you are and that will hurt that will hurt and it's not worth it in the in the long run Mm -hmm. Uh, oh yeah one way emotions you don't oh rejection we were talking about that earlier um yeah where where like you're the person that that doesn't have the big feelings but somebody else does you can take that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know. She says all the time that I'm, I don't know. Like, <laughs> because, you know. I'm, I'm very truthful. I'm very he's honest. He's very honest. The first thing he's, well, not the first thing, but one of the things he said to me uh, the first time we had spent the night together was, uh, you don't annoy me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, he looked at me and better said that you don't annoy me and I was just like that is a nice thing thank you but also what it and it <laughs> I feel like if you don't know me it feels right but I I don't like to be annoyed I live like a life of peace where he I live life of a hermit he I like just to be by like to be myself so not annoying me is a good thing but when you're the one who doesn't have the strong feelings like you really have to be okay with saying it like i was in situations where people people were 
very much in love with me or told people that they were in love with me even though we had never had a conversation really about mm. what relationship would look like um where we would live which is real for me as being someone who's lived with partners in the past and i i i just felt like are you sure you feel that way um we've never even discussed how do you have the conversation? conversation the conversation was awkward yes it's always going to be awkward somebody has to bring it up first and you have to stand your ground and be like i think you're an amazing person for me and my my conversation went, went a little bit like this i think you're an amazing person we have a great time together and we have really amazing interactions and i like them for what they are and because of our past conversations and how much we know about each other, I know that our relationship styles are not compatible. Mm -hmm. That's, it's as simple as that. Like if you want to be monogamous or want to try ethical non-monogamy simply because you want to have this relationship with me because of your feelings, mm -hmm. I don't think that it should, it's wise. Like it's a terrible power um power like vacuum so to speak when they said the long-term relationship so it's a long-term relationship are you are you falling out of the feelings or I you just understand. never had them i'm curious or they they're just escalating the feelings um because if they're just escalating the feelings and you are a part of the long-term relationship and you're not feeling it anymore you do have to communicate that but you have to consider what that conversation is what the end result of that conversation is going to mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. yeah it's not i mean it's it's a really sticky question when we when we talk about having emotional conversations in general um and I think even even for those of us who've been in long term relationships and have had those conversations like, you know, I being I, I think being being a partner who shows up for it and like that being a thing that we ethically want to do means that sometimes we have to show up and it has to be uncomfortable because there's no, you know, it's 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 like, what is the price of me keeping my mouth shut. Yeah. Um, Oh, I like that. What is the price of me keeping my mouth shut? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to drag it on. Yeah. You don't you don't want anyone to become any more invested? The more you sit in it, the more invested they become. The more mm -hmm. unhappy you'll you'll become because you are not going to be able to pretend like you are feeling these feelings for them. They and they're going to feel it. You don't want mm -hmm. to create uh, an opportunity for resentment to grow or for hurt to grow. I would rather someone, you know, have the thought of me not giving them the thing that they wanted, but sparing them any long term pain as opposed to 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 just being honest. If you can't bear to hurt them, then you really have to consider um your happiness and mm -hmm. and if you want to compromise what that looks like for you because it's a very real thing to compromise we do it mm -hmm. you know we can tell you don't do it don't compromise say no to everyone yeah, but, but we do we do yeah. stay in relationships longer than you know we should or there are times that we escalate relationships that didn't need to be escalated mm -hmm. you have to be you have to be confident in those decisions, whether it's strong and wrong or not. But also keep in mind what the repercussions of our, our decisions to be in these things, um, what they look like for us. Um, and if the relationship ends, someone said how to talk about if the relationship ends. Um, you have to sit down create a, a safe space and not just a safe space for others, but a safe space for you. Mm -hmm. Whether that be in public, whether that, you know, sometimes breaking up with someone in person is hard. We've got Zoom now. Not that I'm encouraging you to break up with someone on Zoom. But if you really feel like you can't 
you won't be able to disconnect if you're in front of them because it's a little harder. Mm -hmm. That's where you're creating that boundary for yourself mm -hmm. so that maybe you're not taking on any, any more emotions than you have, um, than you already have. Or if you need physical distance to protect yourself because you don't know how they may react. Um, be okay giving yourself boundaries if you are vetting someone or if you're in a relationship and you've explored the things that you want for yourself and that relationship is not serving you. Be prepared mm -hmm. to have the conversations and to deal with the, the fallout, so to speak, um, because we can't avoid hurting people, but it's our intentions that matter. If, if you're removing yourself from this relationship because you need better for yourself and you know that this person probably deserves better too, keep that in mind and be confident in knowing that you're, you're doing it without the intent to harm. It's, it's really yeah. about what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to disconnect from them because they hurt you and you want them to hurt? No. But if you, you really feel like, I don't feel the same way this person feels, you have to tell them. And you have to do it in a way that feels good for you. Because you can only control, you already know that the conversation is not going to feel good for them. If it's not going to feel good for them on Zoom, it's probably not going to feel good for them in person. Right. But you need to make sure that you're protecting yourself. Yeah. We, I want to talk about one thing, I think, before like we close up. I know okay. we're um, <laughs> running out of time, but um, because Open allows folks to um, date and have partner profiles, okay. um, we should talk about combining negotiations as a couple. And like, oh, yes. you should be able to talk uh, about um, your negotiations with each other first before you even start looking for someone so like you should do your negotiations separately what you imagine it to be for yourself and what your partner imagines it to be and then you come together and compromise because there are some things that you're just not going to agree with and also be prepared to not do certain things for the sake of your relationship because mm -hmm. when we're unicorn hunting or we're searching for other partners while we're in partnership already we have to consider how these things will make our partners feel mm -hmm. um if you are unicorn hunting or you're searching for partners um together you have to make sure that your negotiations are clear so you're not confusing anyone um if i my boundary is uh first of all make sure that you have realistic boundaries <laughs> Um, I'm not a, a believer in veto power, but some people do. Um, make sure that you're being ethical at all times. If you are nesting partners like we are, we do talk to other people. Um, we consider each other when we do that. You know, we have a routine, especially because we're working from home. We are living here. Um, some people are like, hey, I would like to FaceTime. I have to consider, well, am I doing anything with him today? Even if I'm going to FaceTime someone, I'd like him to know what I'm doing so he can give me space to, to have my conversation. Yeah. And I can do the same. That's one solid negotiation. Mm -hmm. When you are partnered and vetting someone, you have to consider the things that you want together and the things you want separately. And if your partner is just vetting someone else and you are not interacting, but you still want to be a part, make sure that you're clear and letting them know how much you, you need to know, mm -hmm. how much you want to see, because that's a very big thing. Do you feel comfortable seeing your partner on date? Yeah. Are they free to post? If they're not free to post, be prepared to talk about it so that they are also able to communicate that with the person that they're vetting or the person that you guys are vetting so that they understand and, and are able to say if that works for them or not. Maybe they yeah. want to be posted up. Like, no, I don't like that. I want someone to be, to be free to post pictures of me with them or mm -hmm. to talk to me on social media. And, Cause you know, those things are important to people. You have to be able to communicate that. And if it's not going the way you want, or if there are too many loose ends that aren't tying together or fitting together, it's okay to walk away. Please walk away. Don't, don't be 
don't be shady. Don't try to talk to them on the, the low, low, low. It, it's okay to just say, this is not falling in line with the things that I want for myself. Even if it's not something that you've negotiated with yourself personally, mm -hmm. and it just doesn't feel right to you, mm -hmm. um, it's okay to speak up and say something. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's a very real reality. You know, I used to be a, a unicorn. Um, I've seen my share of veto power. <laughs> like, no, you can't do those things. <laughs> like, you know, it feels crappy, but I feel, I always used to feel like, Dag, I should have asked about that sooner. I should have asked them or asked him or her how they felt about this thing. So I'm not feeling like I'm missing out on an experience. If I would have just asked a little sooner, I would have known that that probably wasn't yeah. for myself. Yeah. But yeah, I, I know that was very important to you. Um, we, we try our best to make sure that we are keeping each other as abreast as necessary, mm -hmm. especially given the fact that we're still um, on lockdown. We're in the same house, but we do date outside of our relationship. So we want to make sure that we're giving each other space and opportunity to explore, mm -hmm. to vet, to do all the things that we're confident that each other does. Yeah. You know, I know that he vets mm -hmm. people. He knows that I do the same thing. Yeah. He knows the things that I look for and the boundaries that I respect. And we revisit them uh, every couple months, if anything is changing or if I'm considering something or if I'm <laughs> unsure how he'll react to something, I, I like to ask. Yeah. To ask, we like to talk. We like to talk. <laughs> I saw that there was one question about BDSM. I just want to say that anything can be, most things can be, it's actually right here. Oh. <laughs> um, most things can be pretty light in BDSM. Start with some light bondage. Start with some silk ties and some silk rope, or some cotton rope. Oh, yes, cotton mm -hmm. rope. Cotton rope is great. Cotton rope feels really good on this skin. Yeah, watch out for mm -hmm. the wrists and the joints, you know, and don't tie mm -hmm. too tightly. Um, I love rope. Rope is my favorite. <laughs> I love rope, yes. I was like, Foxy, everybody knows you love rope. You are famous. <laughs> you no, I mean, I love, yeah, I just was like, of course, that's, because that's what I think of when I think of her, actually. <laughs> yes. That's always, like, the first thing. I'm like, Ty, yeah. and, and you can do it yourself. Like, you know, these types of playing kink, there's, first of all, that's a whole nother workshop. There are so many things in kink that you can do on your own to explore it, to figure out what you like. Um, you can always find us on Instagram to ask us more questions about those things. Um, so we can connect you with some great content creators, some people who specialize in self-tying yes. or just simple ties that you can execute on your own. Mm -hmm. I also like wax play. I'm a huge fan. And you can do that by yourself. You can also do that, but I do it by myself often. <laughs> Impact play. If sensation just... play. There's so much you can do. I love, oh my gosh, don't give me a Wartenberg wheel. I love the yeah. <laughs> ice cubes. Yeah, there's stuff you probably have in your house that you can do. Yeah. A feather. I love, I have just one little feather. It feels so good just to rub. Um, warm oils, you know, things of that nature. Blindfolds. Yeah. Blindfolding. It's an, easy, it's an easy one. I think that's one of the ones I got into when I was in like my early 20s, like blindfolds. Mm -hmm. But good. it's, you know, we were talking about like what's intense and what's not. Um, I have played with people that cannot be blindfolded because for them, that pushes them into a place of feeling really, so there's no like what, what is officially light play versus officially yeah. heavy play because we don't like, we're all just a whole bag of experiences that, that all show up in different ways. So true. You're um, right. That could be very intense for someone. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like. Self, I mean, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, especially, you know, your sensory deprivation, that, that's a lot. Like, mm -hmm. what do you mean I can't see you coming? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, awesome. This has been incredible. Yeah, thank you so much. I know we have, I'm so excited to see all the questions we've had in chat. Say so it's many questions. Our, our most active chats that we've ever had. So obviously people are yeah. very excited about this topic. I think it's something that's just not talked about often is, and I know being on this side of a dating app, um, 
we get it a lot that people are afraid to meet in person, especially now with COVID times. So having a little toolkit where you can feel confident to say, okay, no, I, I actually know there are a couple ways for me to look for the red flags, look for the green flags, kind of what are the communication tools I should be focusing on? I think that's something that's so needed right now. People need those, yeah. those tips and tricks, um, yeah, especially for, for the way dating is changing rapidly right now. So thank you so much for yeah. For even having this as a as a you know an available yeah. option that you are teaching because it's certainly Thank not you. something that's out it's there. So important, yeah. especially now. You know, people are you know they went the the, the mandatory lockdowns. You know, we're mm -hmm. still social distancing, mm -hmm. but people are looking for the companionship. They spent so much time alone. You know, mm -hmm. we want to open up. We want to get to know people, and we want to take our time. Yes. Yeah. This is how you pace yourself, and this is how you build the confidence to make sure that you have all the information you need yeah. before you take that next step to meet someone. Before you go on that that cool date, um, mm -hmm. or before you have to say, "I'm not interested in this interaction yeah. any longer." Right. Um, yep. This is how you can you know, communicate that with someone, be confident, set your boundaries and, and, and feel good about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, you don't miss out on anything. <laughs> uh, actually, that's a great lead in uh, for those of you who are not regular followers of our, we, ours, we do one of these usually every week. Um, and you can go to our YouTube channel, which you can get to through our website, hashtag open.com. Uh, go to our YouTube channel and you will see the previous 37 educational events that we've hosted. Y'all are number 38. So this video will actually be up on Friday. So if you have somebody that you want to start this conversation with and you want to kind of give them the same tools that you got tonight, forward them that, that video, sit down, watch it, have popcorn, do a FaceTime and have a conversation. Um, next week, actually, I think this is actually a perfect timing. Um, we are really excited because we have Jessica Fern, um, who is a, um, is she, is, uh, she's an amazing uh, psychotherapist writer, um, but she actually uh, recently put out the book Polysecure, which delves into attachment styles specifically in consensually non-monogamous relationships. Um, nice. So I think some of the questions that we were getting tonight about vetting, it's like, you know, when we know how our attachment style is and what, what we want to shift with it, like we have now a new language to talk to yeah. the people that we're being. So I feel like this is a great lead in for next week. Such too. A great lead in. I'm going to um, you. Uh, you know what? You. I, I actually mentioned it to my therapist who specializes, who uh, works with people who are ethically non-monogamous, and, and he said that he actually assigned this to the rest of the, the therapists and his team because it was one of the best books that he'd read on attachment style. So I'm just like, you know, all kinds of excited. Um, so that'll be next Wednesday, and that is the 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, same same location, hashtag open.com slash live. Um, oh, my gosh. Thank you both so much. Um, I'm going to let Miley do the official uh, carry us out. Um, and then we'll turn off the recording and we'll hang out for a little bit um, and, and uh, visit with each other. But um, for me personally, thank you for putting up with all of my random emails going like, hey, um, I, I love the fact that you were here. I really do love the fact that you're having a conversation that I think doesn't happen um, on an educational level and unfortunately doesn't happen on one-to-one -one levels and so thank you for prioritizing this conversation for us yes so it's thank you so much yeah. go ahead it's, it's our work and we love to do it yes we okay. like to talk, talk to them people are like what should i do if did you ask them how they felt mm -hmm. about it yet go talk to them mm -hmm. first and then come back to me we yep. have to you know, feel good about talking this is the yeah. perfect time to talk now that's all we can do <laughs> yeah, right take this we talk. all have more time let's take it for communication yes, yeah take it for communication Truth. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Blaine and to Lotus Rope Wolf for reminding us to use our words as we, um, you know, get into different partnerships and relationships. Um, so what a, what a lucky, um, 
catch to find you guys and have you come spend an evening with us truly mm -hmm. thank you um and to all of our guests who joined us live thank you for yes. all the amazing questions and interacting uh, interactions and chat we really appreciate you yeah. and yeah please join us next week we enjoy putting these on for you and we hope to continue bringing you all this great education from great educators yay thank you thank you bye-bye <laughs>